As we know, Prince Harry is trying to uh, sue a newspaper in the UK. 33 different articles, he says, clearly were informed by either direct phone hacking or some sort of dodginess. Rupert Bell is the Royal Correspondent with Talk TV in the UK. Now, he has... Uh, talk Radio, I should say. He has come and gone from the courtroom, but the reporter that it was the former Royal Editor is still there. So what are we hearing about day three here? And sadly, it means we don't get another reconstruction with an actor. Well, that, that, that was uh, one of the great... Not, not even, what we're still waiting for is the sort of real smoking gun, because clearly Harry was the main focus of attention. This is a seven-week trial, and th th that's why. And it's going to take a long time before we get, A, the answer, but clearly what happened over the last two days with Harry being out there um, on the front line, as it were, not able to do a, with being aggressively questioned in a sort of slightly disarming manner by Andrew Green, working on behalf of the Mirror Group newspapers, um, was certainly putting him on the spot, although he did, on, by all accounts, he gave a slightly better impression yesterday. But what ultimately matters is have they got enough evidence across whether it be the finding out with the reporter if he is revealed to have gone about his business in an illegal manner. But remember, the Mirror Group, when they had the Levinson inquiry, at that time, uh, no mirror journalist was charged with phone hacking. So this is why it's a, a very difficult case for Prince Harry to prove. And certainly he was suspicious, and that seemed to be the tenant of coming through, but there was nothing that actually said, where is the proof? And that seems to me to be uh, certainly the way we've seen it here. It feels like at the moment it's just Harry... Um, proving to be the ultimate whinging pom. Well, <laughs> God love you. You said it. Uh, which is that what, what I love here, you know, you're playing well to the Aussie audience. God love you. Um, which is, <laughs> we, we all know, and, and it doesn't matter how serious or insignificant things can be, be they sort of big news events or you're just trying to put something together in your own mind. Just because two dots are close together doesn't mean you can force them together. And it feels like this action, in part, is him trying to force those dots to be joined because the defence that the Mirror have kept offering up in the courtroom was, well, hang on, there were three possible ways you could have got to that conclusion. You've just come up with what you think the answer is. Have they progressed on from that, though? Do they need to do more to, to disprove? Because, you know, do they have to win 33 nil? Does Harry only have to win, you know... Two to thirty-one. I, I think the ult I think ultimately the judge is going to be pouring. There's no jury trial here. Will be pouring through every piece of evidence. But even those thirty-three, there was never one moment where he said, "I know that this was as a result of phone hacking." And that's the hard part for Harry. He may have his suspicions that a lot of this information may have been gleaned, as he would deem, in an illegal manner. But this is what is so hard to prove. But bearing in mind, this was some time ago and, you know, things have moved on significantly. And that's so hard for Harry. And that's where I think he's trying to reconcile himself that this is his big moment to take on the British media, to take on the people that feel has ruined his life. But let's not forget, until he got married, uh, he was actually very well supported by the British media. They did appreciate him. He was seen as a, a positive force for good. It's only in subsequent events that this is all unraveled. And as he said during court, he's done a lot of this to ensure that this doesn't affect his wife, Meghan, and, and be subject to a, a constant uh, a sort of art, hate articles and an and extreme sort of vilification in the press. And so that's part of his reason. But he's got to prove in a court of law, and that's a different thing than just talking on Oprah or any or Netflix or writing about it in his book. And, and that's the problem for him. Good on you, Rupert. I always love a radio man because you know exactly the words to use and beautifully, uh, beautifully describe things. You're at the top of your craft. Good on you, mate.